Hey everyone, and welcome to the Glow Up Girl podcast. I'm Kyra Mitchell Lewis, and thank you for joining. Hope everyone is doing well. I hope you're having a great week. So we are back with a new episode of the career series today. So before we go to our new topic this week, let's just do a quick recap of our last episode. So the last time we chatted, we talked about um, burnout and what it is, how it feels and ways to avoid it and overcome it. So I left you with some strategies that could help you to prevent or even overcome um, burnout. So let's just do a quick look at those. So we talked about workload. Um, We talked about um, when you have your workload and your capacity, when they're both in balance, then it is possible for you to get your work done. And, you know, also really like um, find time for things like professional development, um, rest, and also recovery. So a couple of things I asked you to do um, was assess, you know, how you're doing with like planning your work. Like, do you know what's coming? Do you have an idea of like what your week is going to look like? Um, also delegating tasks, you know, I know we don't like to delegate all the time, but delegating can really help us to, you know, just not carry too much of the load on ourselves. Also, the next thing is saying no. It is okay. It is definitely okay to say no to someone um, and say that you do not have room on your plate to accommodate. And then the last thing was let go of perfection. Sometimes, You just have to put the work out there and you have to optimize it. All right. And then the next thing was uh, a feeling of control, right? So feeling when you feel out of control, you feel like there's a lack of autonomy or you don't have inadequate resources that can definitely impact your ability to succeed and then also lead to burnout. So um, really, we talked about considering how you could regain some control, like when you get a project from your manager, even if it's like a last minute project, really agreeing on a timetable for um, when you can accomplish this and what resources it's going to take, how are you going to be able to like balance other projects that you have, but having a sense of agreement with your manager. And the next thing is community. So really just having a community of people that help you feel supported, um, you know, um, people that, you know, can be positive, can pour into you in a positive manner um, that really aids to help feeling supported, can aid and work against, um, reduce you, um, the likelihood of being burnt out. Um, And then mental breaks is another way. Um, So being able to just stop during the day, you know, whether that's like meditating, going for a walk, just standing outside if you, um, you know, um, if you, whether you work at home or in an office, but just being able to like take a mental break away from the, um, from the office or your desk for the moment. Um, And then also physical breaks. So like maybe you work out, during the day, you know, at lunch, um, maybe you go for a walk, but just being able to find those things that can really help you um, to be able to decompress for small moments, you know, even if you have to take like, so even if you take like a five to 10 minute break every two hours or so, but just really listening to your body and what you need. Okay, so there was a few others, um, but if you want to hear those, then you need to go check the episode out if you missed it. Um, And then you can hear all about recognizing how to recognize burnout, what burnout actually is, what it looks like, how it feels, and then these strategies for how you can avoid it. All right, so let's go on to today's topic. So this comes from a conversation that I've had with a few people. Um, So I thought this might be a really good topic to cover um, in this week's episode. So imagine, walk with me, walk with me. You may be doing everything right. You deliver projects on time. You deliver under budget. You speak up in group meetings and you contribute valuable 
insights and your peers all love you your manager you know people that work with your managers love your manager loves you people say you're great to collaborate with um and yet your career does not move doesn't move an inch to be honest in fact you might get the sense that your manager is actively Blocking your path to promotion. There, I said it. (laughs) They're blocking your path to promotion, putting you off whenever you want to talk about getting, you know, a raise. They're offering like very vague scraps of hope, um, you know, with comments like, keep doing what you're doing or the all infamous, I'm working on it, but they never follow up. Or worse, they're offering deceptive assurances that you're going to be the next one, all while you see other people around you who sometimes could be less competent, climb the ladder above you. Those managers who don't validate their employees' contributions or fail to take an active interest in their development and growth may find themselves a hot topic in HR when you're quitting. (laughs) Okay, so you may have guessed that today's topic is when your manager is the roadblock. Think about that. Think about some of the things I just mentioned. So you may have some thoughts. I'm going to also share a few with you. So this is what it might look like when a manager is a roadblock and is holding you back. One, they make all communication go through them. You know the old CC me on that. Or someone comes to ask them for, you know, your department's assistance on a project. You're the delegated person who gets the opportunity, but your manager continues to just not let you lead the project, but wants to continue to have all things go through them. Oftentimes, having all things go through them, but slowing it down at the same time, right? Does that sound familiar to anybody? Okay. Number two, preventing you from collaborating with others. So that's that same thing. It's like, you've got this project, they put you on the project, but yet they keep having the separate meetings with people talking about the project and then bringing you back just little scraps of information because they didn't take good enough notes Um, they don't really understand like how to execute and get there. They've just got like the, the end goal, right? But they haven't thought back to the pieces that it's going to take to actually bring this project together. I don't know y'all. That's just number two. And I I feel like at some point in my career, like I've experienced, um, those two, um, and maybe you have too. Number three, never asking about your career goals. Just, I mean, just thinking you're just going to work there for in that position, doing their, their bidding and their work forever. Um, number four, withholding career advancement opportunities. So guess what? If there are any career opportunities within your department, I mean, if you're part of a larger company that has other departments, there might be a need for your skill set somewhere else. So this means they would have to advocate for you. So they're not advocating cross departmentally with other people, you know, to try and help you find maybe opportunities if they're not able to give you one. All right. The next thing is taking credit for your ideas. (laughs) So I had an idea. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, there's nothing worse than you giving an idea to uh, manager and then them taking that idea. And then next thing you know, you're doing a project based on an idea that you had, 
that your manager said wasn't so great at the time when you had that idea, right? Yeah. Um, Not challenging you to learn new things, to develop. Because a manager who's going to be a roadblock, they're not going to want to see you continue to grow. They're not going to want to see you, um, you know, move ahead, learn new skills. Um, it's shameful. It really, it really is shameful. But I mean, we know the world exists and it has those types of people in it. And then the last thing is keeping you out of the loop on what they're working on as well as bigger projects, which is the absolute worst thing that any manager or leader could do is to not fill their people in on what's happening from, you know, the team level, the company level, um, or any key strategic projects for the company. So that's even more than just being a roadblock, that's sabotaging your growth. Um, you know, and honestly, anybody who's listening who may have experienced that, it doesn't have anything to do with you. It has everything to do with your manager and their insecurities. So despite what you believe and what you may have been led to believe, this is not a reflection on you. It's just an effort on that manager's part to keep their job secure, or at least that's what they think they're doing. Okay, that's a, this is a tough subject, fam, because it happens so often, right? These things are... Things are happening all the time with people who have been, you know, I, as a manager, I consider it to be a blessing and that, you know, God gave me this opportunity to help craft, shape, mold, help people grow. And it's just really, part of my language, really shitty when managers abuse that when they abuse the blessing and they don't help people grow or they only think about themselves and they are selfish in the sense of putting their insecurities out there on their employees and not letting their employees shine in order to make themselves look good. So if you happen to be somebody out there listening and um, you recognize some of these things that you may, you have done these things like, I mean, change change, do better, do better for your team. They deserve better. Okay. All right. Getting Kyra's going to get off that soapbox y'all. Okay. So I am going to give you some things that I think you could do. If you're in a situation right now where you have a manager who is a roadblock, a manager who's blocking your growth, who's blocking projects, who's, you know, who's just not really a good advocate for you or um, the team. So the first thing I would say, the first thing you do, you do have to do is to schedule one-on-one with your manager. Now, hopefully you've already got a recurring one-on-one on the schedule, right? But you can do this in addition, right? This could be a special one-on-one um, where you go in to speak to them You know, the key, I will tell you, because I know you're going to probably be upset, right? Because I'm upset for you just talking about it. Um, The key is to not lead with emotions, right? But to lead with facts. Lead with facts because the facts don't lie. It's like I always say in marketing, numbers don't lie, y'all. Okay, so Make sure you've got your facts, because if you go in and you're if you leave with emotion, then your manager is probably going to become defensive or even combative. And then that's not going to be a good conversation for either of you. And you're not going to accomplish what you were hoping to. So a few things I think you could address in the meeting is let them let your manager know that you um, want to be challenged. You know, you want to be pushed outside of your comfort zone. You want to learn new things and progress in your career. Second, communicate your professional goals. What what do you want? Tell them what it is that you want from this career 
in this opportunity that you're in, in, in this particular organization, tell them what you want. Three, share examples of when you felt like growth was neglected or obstructed and how it's been affecting you. Four, express the desire to learn from them. Because ultimately, you know, managers want to feel like, you know, I mean, a good manager is hopeful that a team can learn from them. And then the last thing, ask them to lay out a clear plan with milestones to ensure that you're set up for success. So once you talk about those things and you finish the meeting, send a follow-up email to your manager outlining everything that you discussed and also next steps and, you know, talk about the, you know, such as next steps and your solution. Take that copy, (laughs) keep that copy because you want to make sure you have documentation, you know, in in, you know, on the off chance that, you know, nothing changes or they try to retaliate. Okay, so that's the first thing you should do. Now, if you are still not, you know, seeing anything, you know, happen, I would reach out to HR or a next level for advice, a skip level, have you, right? Nothing happens after you meet with your manager or your manager like starts to retaliate against you. The next step is definitely HR. Um, I would go to HR first before I went, you know, did the skip level meeting with your manager's boss, right? Um, Because I think HR would be the best equipped to, you know, help you to navigate through it. Because at this point you need to pull in HR. If you're starting to see, you know, we have this meeting, I outline these things, nothing's changed, or this person's actually become more combative when we meet. This person's not giving me any more information than I was getting the last time. Then I think you should definitely um, go to HR. And then when you meet with HR, make sure you present all pieces of your evidence, right? To support what you're saying um, and share how it's negatively impacting you because any good HR team, if you're building or you say you have, uh, you want to have a great culture, um, you don't want that kind of toxicity in the workplace. So any good HR team is going to go into action um, to help you with um, building out next steps. Okay. The third thing is put yourself first and assess your options. After you talk to your manager, right? um, You don't know what's going to happen there, right? It may, things may, there's a strong possibility that nothing's going to change or it might even get worse for you. So what's really crucial at this moment is to think about your mental well-being, your physical well-being, your overall happiness and self-worth. Like that, that's it, the end, it's all about you. So this might mean that you may have to find a new opportunity. This might mean you might need to change departments. So you can ask yourself, is there a career path in this company or is this just a stepping stone to your next job? Also, ask yourself, if your manager holds you back from growing professionally, how do you expect to ever grow within the company if that manager's still your manager? And I think it's also really important, too, to assess like the HR role, too. And I'm going to I'm going to come back to that in a minute. Also, is this only happening to you or to others at or around your level? Have you been informed of any performance issues which may warrant this type of oversight? You know, um, because, you know, sometimes, which is also a bad thing, sometimes you've got these managers who don't give real time feedback, which I'm definitely an advocate for. Let me know. And, you know, I mean, if I did something, tell me we can course correct, but don't wait until my performance review to tell me that I suck. 
or you think I suck. Because let's let's be real, I don't suck. You don't suck either. None of you suck. So, you know, just <laughs> don't hold that information. I hate when managers do that. But I would also say, to go back to the HR point, it's also to ask yourself to look at how HR has handled this scenario. Um, because that's also really important in deciding if you want to move forward, right? So if you talk to your manager and then nothing, you know, your manager got more combative or started to retaliate, you went to HR and then HR did some little like cover their butt meeting where it's like you and your manager, but nothing's, excuse me, nothing's being solved. It's just literally for them to say that they followed the step of, of following up and then it didn't really help you. So you want to pay attention to that because you also want to ask yourself, do I want to work for a company where the HR team doesn't support the employees? I said it because <laughs> I've worked places where they didn't, where they take no action and they just basically make excuses for the managers. So um, if you find yourself, you know, and you're looking to think about that, maybe, you know, assessing it may look like moving, just make sure you research companies, do your due diligence, read employee reviews, go to Glassdoor, check them out, look at what the culture is like. Um, also, maybe like reach out to people who work there on LinkedIn. Also, during the interview, during the interview, ask, if you can speak to people who are just regular everyday team, like team members, like outside of the team that you're looking to interview with, right? Because you might interview with a certain level of people who are going to be your peers. Um, but ask to speak to people who may be, if you're interviewing for marketing, say, can I speak to someone in accounting? Can I talk to someone in customer experience? Like talk to other team members who you may not um, work with every day, but you can find out, maybe get to the core of like how they really feel about the company. You know, it's just good. I mean, I think like, um, you know, you if you're able to like have a Zoom meeting, depending on if it's in person or Zoom interview, whatever, you're able to just like be able to get some insight. I personally think like I'm a good um, read on people. So I think like I could maybe tell if somebody's just being like, oh, yeah, it's so great here. But their eyes are saying, do not take this job. <laughs> we used to joke about this at an old job um, that I was at where we um, were going to write a letter and say, don't do it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Anywho. All right, so the next thing is keep thorough documentation. As I mentioned above, um, you know, like um, it's really important to make sure that, you know, you have a file. If you don't already, create a file where you store screenshots, communications, document achievements, and anything else that proves that your manager might be sabotaging your career growth. I mean, you have to have this um, information if you're going to take it to someone above your manager and also keep it like send it to your personal email and your personal laptop so that you have it as well I mean you know because you don't want your manager finding like something you know that's also an issue if your manager is like snooping around on your laptop even it even if it is the word laptop why would you need to be on my laptop just saying. Um, some types of documentation that you might include, right? Brainstorming sessions you have with your manager and what the result of the ideas you introduced had on the overall company. So just kind of like successes, when and how your manager took credit for your ideas, times your manager has rejected or neglect, neglected professional development opportunities, um, situations where they prevented you from collaborating with others, and then ways in which you think they've been setting you up to fail. All right, so let's just talk about um, a couple other things that you can do. Um, like, <laughs> so we talked about having, you know, setting the meeting, right? Um, which you set the meeting, you know, gently forcing, I like that, gently forcing the conversation. Um, because sometimes you just, you know, when you have that meeting, just make sure you set a clear agenda. Ask, you know, um, ask where you stand. What will it take to reach the next level? 
um, and um, develop an action plan. I think that's the most important thing is like you want to make sure that you have all of your I's dotted and T's crossed when you go into that meeting with your manager. Because if you go in there and you don't have things together, y'all, it's not going to be a good meeting for you. And then your manager is going to be mad and they're probably going to retaliate against you. So just make sure you're doing that. All right. Another thing, build your network and engage with other company stakeholders, right? So one of the things that I learned when I had a manager that I felt like was not really, I mean, like they weren't trying to sabotage me, but they certainly weren't helping me. They weren't going to help me to get promoted. So what I had to do was to, you know, build strong relationships outside of them, right? When I worked on projects and, you know, and that was even like working with people at their level, like just, um, just being able to like form those relationships and have people see you for the work that you can do and the impact that you bring to the table. Because for me, it looks like one day, someone who was a VP telling me that, you know, I mean, we just invited you to the meeting because we know you're doing the work anyway. And everybody, I smiled. I'm just, I'm happy to help. And everyone else in the meeting sort of gave me this look like, we all know that you're the one doing the work. So, but, you know, (laughs) I didn't laugh or anything because I didn't want anybody to go back and say that I was laughing at my manager, but at the same time, make me feel really good because I knew that those people knew that I was, you know, actively um, making an impact on the company. And I will say that because when you build those relationships, you can often do this thing, which is consider a lateral move. Right. So when the trajectory of a career path seems like you're being blocked, it could make sense to make a, a lateral move in the company to another position. So I would also say consider that, my friends. Whew. Okay, so those are my thoughts. Let's quickly, I'm going to quickly go back through um, some of the steps that you can take, right? Schedule a, man- a one-on-one with your manager. Make sure you've got all your documentation. Go into that and with the facts, with the facts only, friends, following that meeting, once you've discussed everything and asked the right questions, send a follow-up email outlining your next steps and the solution that you've talked about. All right, number, the next thing, if you don't see any improvements from the meeting or if you sense retaliation, um, then you're going to want to reach out to HR. So reach out to HR, take those that documentation, have an honest discussion about how you're feeling, um, where you like to for them to help you, um, and then move forward. Next, if you see no changes from or no action from HR, then you're going to want to really put yourself first and assess what options are there? Like, that's just the truth. You've got to think about your mental and physical well-being and also your career. You know, you want to be happy. You want to be doing something that you love. You want to also know that there's an opportunity for you to grow. We all want to like grow and, and develop in our careers. So you're not asking for something that's like, oh my God, I can't believe you asked for that. You're asking for something that is expected in today's workforce. All right, just some other thoughts. Keep thorough documentation, should have a file. If you're going through this, you should have a file stored somewhere that's hidden that you can put screenshots, documents, achievements, um, and put all that information there. Also make sure you've duplicated it on a personal laptop as well. And then, you know, just one, going back to having the conversation. Sometimes you have to gently force the conversation because especially if your manager is not someone that likes to have one-on-ones or they always find a way to cancel, then maybe you're going to gently force it during a meeting that they set with you to talk about a project and you're going to. So just, you got to stay ready. 
<laughs> stay ready if you're having a hard time chasing that manager down. Two, just build your network and engage with other um, company stakeholders and in the hopes that potentially there could be a lateral move that you might be able to consider. But I will say to you, and just closing on the topic for this week, is that it's just really important when you're assessing right where you want to be, where you need to be, to feel comfortable, to feel safe, to feel appreciated. Also, just make sure you look at the overall culture of where you are. Is this is the culture of this place even something that's worth me going through all these steps? Because you may say, mm -mm, actually, no, I'm just going to go ahead and start, you know, looking at other opportunities. So I think you really want to take that time to assess. And then when you're thinking about different opportunities, just make sure you're doing the due diligence. Do the research, read the reviews, get to know the company, see what they stand for, what do they value is all really important, okay? All right, so before I go, remember you can head over to glowupgirl.com. You can access previous podcast episodes, resources, and more. Um, if you're hearing these stories that I'm telling you on the career series and it's resonating with you and you, um, or you may or may not be where you want to be in your career. A couple of things you can do. One, you can go to our website. There is a quiz that is called, is it time for a career change? Um, even if you're afraid to take the leap and you can discover one of three things. One, you're happy. You're finding purpose. I'm just ready to elevate. Two, I'm just okay. It pays the bills, but I don't know that I'm finding purpose or if I want to elevate. And three, nope, it is time for me to go. I am not finding any joy I want out of here. You know, after you take that quiz, feel free to schedule a call with me. I'd love to help guide you through this next phase of your career. Um, the one benefit that I think I definitely bring to the table is that I'm still a corporate professional myself. So I'm not telling you something that I haven't experienced, not telling you something that I haven't seen, I'm still seeing things in this stage of my career as well. So um, it's like I've walked a path that I would hope to help be an easier path for you because I have experienced some of these things and seeing some of these things. So um, yes, yeah, so go there, glowupgirl.com, check out the career coach, um, the glow getter coaching. Um, and I'd love to have a chat with you. Also, I am offering $75 like glow up, glow getter coaching hours. So if you're like, I don't want to commit to a four month program, but I would just like to have someone to talk to. I mean, We've got, I've got $75 an hour, just sessions for you to bring a issue or concern or problem. And you and I figure out within that hour, a solution to help you go on your way. Also, if you are out there and you're like, I've got a topic or I've got an issue or a question, send it over to hello at glowupgirl.com. And I would love to tackle it. Maybe even make it a topic on the show. So with that being said, thank you all so much for joining, for taking time out of your day um, to join the show today. So until next time, stay focused, fab, and glow up. Take care, everyone. <laughs>